Hey guys, this is Andre here. I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona at Barrett Jackson Auction 2023. That's happening right now. And I'm at the Elevation Off Grid booth. Why? Well, you probably have seen these trucks before. I have three very special trucks here though from the show. This Ford F550, a Ram 5500, and also a very special truck in the background that we'll get to in a minute. But we've, we've done a few videos with a truck similar to this and you've had many, many questions about it. What can I do with this truck? Why is this truck here? Is it too big? Is it too long? Is it too wide? Well, I have one of the guys from... Elevation Off Grid, I'm Jeremy. Elevation Off <laughs> Jeremy, my buddy Jeremy here. So, how, Jeremy, how about this? How about we go through these three special trucks and answer some questions? Okay, love it. How about that? Love it. So, tell me about this one. So. This is kind of your top of the line build, right? Sure, sure. So this is our black edition is what we call it. Um, basically we start with a 550 chassis cab, which is just the cab with no bed, um, straight frame rails. Biggest benefit of a 550 is you get the increased payload of a straight rail truck, a straight frame rail truck. Um, obviously single wheel conversion, we don't use spacers, so we're able to, to maintain factory payload, factory towing capacities. So, and this truck is quite capable. It's very capable. So, uh, let's let's look at some of the numbers in the back. Sure. So then, you build this bed as well, right? Correct. How, how does the bed build? So every one of our 550 picks up, pickup starts life as a, as a 450 brand new takeoff bed or a 350 new takeoff bed. Um, the, all the inner components in the bed stay stock. Um, we manufacture a longer outer bedside, which is four inches longer than the stock bedside. It's 100% aluminum. Um, so the outer bedside is actually 8'4", but the bed does retain all 8 foot standard interior dimensions. Um, we make up the difference through a filler in the front, so you can use all standard bed accessories. Um, tonneau covers, you know, uh, power retractable tonneau covers, backflips. We have a backflip on the Ram now. Um, so it tried to make it as functional as possible. This is a 100% factory Ford Dually Flare, uh, unmodified. Um, yeah. And this truck is sitting on 42s, but we'll 42s. get to that. Sure, sure. We'll get to that in a minute. I wanted to get to the payload numbers. Okay. Because, so one of the questions people had in the previous video that this truck was too long, but in fact, like you showed, it's an eight foot bed. Right? It's an eight-foot bed. So it's not that much longer than a regular F-350 Correct. dually, Correct. let's say. Correct. So we grow about four inches in the bed, um, and then we grow about four inches on the front bumper. We have a little bit deeper bumper that provides concealment for the winch. Um, rear bumper maintains the same dimensions as a stock bumper. So overall, the truck's eight inches longer than like a 350 long bed or a, a 450. Um, yeah. Yeah, so same length. Uh, we'll get to maneuverability in a second, Sure. Uh, but here's some of the numbers, right? So this is one of your builds. Uh, the truck weighs about 10,000 pounds, give Correct. or take, yep. maybe a little bit less, but this is a big number right here. Big number, big number. And that was really the concept behind the truck, was, was, was building a truck, and we actually started with this guy, uh, creating a truck that can, can carry big weight, but also be comfortable to drive when it's unloaded. The, the problem with, with 550s or, or 450s or even some would say 350s is the ride quality with unsprung weight. Um, no weight on the leaf spring is very poor ride quality. So with full liquid spring suspension, it, it, it's fully adjustable. So when there's no weight in the bed, the fluid is allowed to flow totally from the strut through the line into almost a remote reservoir system. As weight is increased, there's a rate valve which pulsates and it modulates that fluid flow. It automatically adjusts its height and it pulls data every 40 milliseconds. So it's constantly adjusting and adapting for weight as well as driving characteristics and driver inputs. Sweet, so this is basically a liquid spring suspension and also the latest generation of that. Correct. Uh, Correct. On most of these trucks, or all of them, right? All of these have the latest generation of liquid spring. It's uh, FS4, or Series 4. Okay. Um, it, they have changed the steel makeup, so it's a, it, it's a heavier steel. And what you get is you get uh, 
lighter components. So th this is substantially lighter than the previous system. I don't know the exact weight. I know it's somewhere between three and 400 pounds lighter um, than, than the, the previous system. Okay, but we you have, have that light? Yeah. And I see the height sensors. So the other yep. question that people had was comfort, right? Sure. I mean, uh, usually F-350s, 450s, 550s have terrible unladen ride, like right. you were mentioning. Right. Uh, but, uh, you, well, this is this is why the suspension is very special. And also, like, right height sensors, you could see right there. Um, and I actually drove one of these trucks, the gray one, in the mountains, and I can attest, it's really comfy. Right, right. Yeah, it, it, it basically maintains ride frequency. We usually bill it as like an F-150. It, it rides about like an F-150 empty. Um, and as weight is added to it, it still maintains that same level of ride quality, but it doesn't squat and it, it, it manages that weight substantially better than, than, than just a coil spring suspension. And that's really the cornerstone of our build. Um, the increased track, track width in the front yeah. really let, keeps the truck stable. Yeah, let me show that. Yeah. So you can kind of see, so the rear bed is basically like a 350, right? Yeah. Width. Yep. So basically all we're doing is matching the front to the rear. So if you think about a 350 dually or a 450 dually, you're always going to have an overhang in the rear, narrower front axle. The track width between the front and the rear matches. Also some cool technology in the wheels. It, the front wheel and the rear wheel is actually the same wheel. So for tire rotations, front wheel comes off, he becomes inverted, goes on the left rear. Same thing, left front comes off invert, goes on the right rear. Um, so pretty, pretty simple maintenance there. Yeah, that's really cool. And so these are Goodyear tires, 42s. Correct. Uh, and you said, you know, they have a higher speed rating on some other previous tires. Right. So interesting, interesting fact about kind of this build and, and what we do, almost the entire build is designed around the tire. And there's no tire from 42 inch to 35 inch that will maintain the truck's factory payload and tow rating except this tire. So we do often get questions like, why are the tires so big? Well, it, we have to use this tire, so we don't want to build a, a lifted truck that's worthless. Um, the truck does look cool, and it is a, you know, a badass truck, but we want us to build a functional truck. So the purpose behind using these tires is we're, a, we're able to maintain a speed rating that's livable. Um, previously, the tire that a lot of people were using was a Continental. It has a 65 mile per hour speed rating. This is an 81 mile per hour speed rating. Um, and, and, and we really don't lose payload. Uh, and, and we still maintain the really, really, really tight turning radius that, that is the best part about driving these trucks. And I can attest to that personally. You and I went out in the mountains yeah. and I was able to make a switchback in this big, which appears to be a big truck, right? but a switchback in the Rocky Mountains I was able to do because of that cut, right? This wheel is able to be cut a little bit tighter, yep, and yep. it makes a better turning radius. Makes a better turning radius. This this frame is, is 34 inches wide. Um, wider front axle allows more articulation in the steering gear. Yeah, I, we can even show a little bit of this here. So you're maintaining, like you said, the GVW, the GCW, so you could still tow up to 30,000 pounds with this one? Up to a little over, just a touch over 30,000 pounds. So that's what people, I think, it's hard to grasp, right? The good ride quality, capability, and um, you have some pictures of you towing. Yeah. So we'll, we'll show that in a minute. Um, so let's move to the Ram, right? So you do the Ford line. Do the Ford line. Now we, uh, you also have the Ram 5500, right? Correct. So we released this Ram at SEMA in November. This is our first one. Um, worked on this build for a long time, and we kind of tried to take the same design principles and, and philosophies that, that we've been using in our Fords and implement it in the Ram. Um, you can get the Ram with the limited interior, um, which is, is a little a step up from the, the 550, which is a Lariat. Um, Lariat interior is super nice, but you get some extra wood grain and stuff like that with the Ram. Um, obviously, the you know the six seven Cummins is a legendary engine, um, and, and very 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 similar 
build capabilities and, and build a static we tried to follow. Um, and you don't touch the powertrain, correct? No. In don't. most cases or no. in general? Never touch powertrain. Never touch Including the Ford? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So the only mechanical modifications we do to the trucks is, is the suspension. Uh, we retain factory gearing, uh, factory axles. As much as we can of the, the, the drivetrain, we leave stock. So the only thing being changed is just suspension. Yeah. And now people are probably typing the comment. Well, you put bigger tires, but you left the gearing the same. Right. But in we the case of the Ford, you got a 10 speed, right? The 10 speed with a 488 gear ratio. <laughs> with the Ram, it's a six speed, you have a 489 gear ratio. So you, your, our starting point is substantially higher than like a 450 with 430s or, or potentially 410s and a 350. Um, so we, we don't need to re-gear the truck in order to get the capability that, that we seek out of these trucks. Yeah, so, and also, uh, you're just maintaining that, you know, first of all, why add costs if you don't have to? Right. We'll talk about price at the end. Sure. Um, and it just makes sense. Right. And especially in four low. Yeah. You could go as slowly as you want, basically. You can go as slow as you want, and the, especially the Ram. He'll just, four low, he'll crawl over anything at idle, essentially. So it does have that commercial grade ratings, right? Correct. So the high output, comments, but they're rated differently. A little so, bit different rating, a yeah. little bit different rating. Um, same same payload, this is a 43,000 uh, combined truck. Um, so it's a higher gross combined weight rating higher, than higher, the Ford. Higher gross combined on the Ford, than the Ford. Um, it does have a 9,800 pound payload, so right around very similar payload numbers. So the truck weighs a little bit more, perhaps. Weighs or does it? Very, very close. Oh, very close, okay. So, and once again, the bed, this is kind of a stock, is this a stock fender? It's a replica of a stock dually fender. So okay. it, it is dimensionally the same with the exception of the width. Um, same, same principle as the Ford. There's a filler plate that's added here. The bedside is removed. We add a new bedside that's, that's four inches longer. Um, that four inches is made up because of the wheelbase. So on, on Ram 5500s or, or Ford F550s, um, the wheelbase is four inches longer than, than say, a Ram 3500 or F450 or F350. So if we just put a bed on, it didn't touch the bed, you'd have a weird gap there. So our goal is, is factory fit and finish, uh, which is why we, we spent the time to develop the Can the you bed. lower it, uh, this yeah. one, for just a second? Yeah. Uh, I want to look at the suspension here and talk about towing. <coughs> Jeremy's going to lower this truck a little bit. Yeah. Can you give me some water? Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks, guys. There's some YouTube fans here. Oh, awesome. Heck yeah. Is it going to... Oh, there it goes. So, if you guys are worried about how tall this truck is, so can it fit in a standard garage, maybe? It can fit in a standard garage. So right now it's in low position. Um, this puts the truck on the bump stops in the front and the rear. So this is speed limited to 15 miles an hour. This puts the roof height at six foot, 10 inches. Um, so if you have an eight foot door. Seven this, foot door. Oh, seven foot door. Yeah, so this puts the roof height at six foot, 10 inches. Okay, you said six, I'm sorry. Oh yeah. So, so standard seven both. foot door. Yeah. yeah, you know, seven foot parking garage, seven foot garage door. Hey, I have a seven foot door at my house. It's a standard door. Okay, standard so door. maybe I can have this. You can have this, there you go. <laughs> so, so that's cool, but Thanks. the reason why I wanted you to lower the truck also is because people are saying, oh, that's nice, Jeremy, but I can't tow with this because it's so tall. Sure. And I cannot hook up my gooseneck to it. I can't do anything like that. Sure. So basically, this Ram towed that Ford on a 30-foot trailer here to the show. Okay. Um, we brought another truck out with, with one of our shop trucks on a 30 or 32-foot gooseneck. Do you um, have a picture of that? Yeah. yeah. Let's see what we got here. And while you're looking up the picture, I want to tease this one, which is we're going to talk in a couple of minutes about. This is the uh, F550 again, but it has a Bowen rear flatbed. Well, it's more than the flatbed. It's uh, quite interesting. 
But now, um, do you have some pictures here? Yeah. So this is this is an unmodified Diamond C 32 foot gooseneck trailer. And, and this is a shop truck that we use to make many client deliveries. If, if, if it's a situation where we're personally gonna deliver a truck to a client, we use one of our trucks to do it in a stock trailer. Um, it's, it's by far the, the best towing truck that, that we've ever driven, that many of our clients have ever driven. Because of the suspension, it's, it's, it's fully adaptive and it does modify and correct ride frequency in the truck as you're driving it, but it also compensates for trailer sway and wind sway and that sort of thing. So you're driving down the highway in a crosswind, you're used to feeling a trailer being pushed over six, 10, 12 inches sometimes. The truck will correct for that. And with the increased track width in the front, we do do a couple steering upgrades. It, it, it really kills all of that. Um, <clears throat> and you could put a fifth wheel in here too. Absolutely. And potentially, because a lot of people tow like big, big camping trailers as well. Big camping trailers? Yeah. Most of our clients, um, goosenecks, 90% of them not an issue. If it's a if it's an older gooseneck that, that was made when trucks had much lower bed rail heights, uh, there may be an issue there, but essentially anything like 16, 17 and up on goosenecks, we haven't had any issues with. Um, on the and you could always modify a neck if you wanted to, right? You could if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah. Our goal is for that not to have to be done. Right. On the fifth wheel side, really any trailer manufactured like 2019 and later, um, it, the pin height on it's going to be a little bit taller and many of our clients pull those trailers, no issues. The most common thing we, we compare our trucks to is a really common Super Duty build which is like a 250 or 350 on 37s, usually going to run a 4 or 6 inch lift. Our Black Edition truck sits about an inch and a half lower than that 250 or 350 on 37s and the reason why because that F550 has a two inch lift. Seems like it sits really tall, but it's only a two inch lift. We give it just enough lift to clear the articulation in the tires and to, to have no rub in the rear at articulation left to right. Um, so. Yeah, it's literally flexible. Plus, if you didn't want um, sing, super single conversion, you, sure. could, you could stay dually, right? Absolutely. You could, you could stay like that. Absolutely, yeah, right. yeah. So we still do build our our standard height truck, which we call a Limitless. And um, it's awesome for ranchers, horse trailer, that sort of thing. All right, so now let's finish up with this because we teased it, but it's also here. Uh, tell me about this build. So this is a really, really, really special build. There's lots of firsts on this truck. Um, this is the first bed and the first rig in the world where you have the capability to have an eight foot camper in the bed and onboard spare tire storage in the same truck. Um, this is very commonly seen on the longer wheelbase trucks, which is gonna be a 203 wheelbase or 84 inch cab to axle truck. Um, with the shorter wheelbase trucks, you're able to maintain a lot better center of gravity or horizontal center of gravity. Um, they are more maneuverable, but the downside is you end up with less space. What Bowen has done with this bed is, is they've created a platform that will hold a full-size eight-foot camper and integrate spare tire. All in one. All in one, which all that stuff's awesome. So the wheelbase on this one is the same as the white truck? Yeah, okay. wheelbase on this truck, 179 inches. Wheelbase on white truck, 179 inches. Can you pop this tailgate? Oh, yeah. yeah. Tailgate's removable, it slides off. Aluminum deck, steel subframe underneath. And like you said, this, this floor is eight feet long. Eight so feet you can long. standard Standard eight camper. foot sliding camper, slide in there, no problem. But the payload of this truck is still about 9,800 pounds. 9,800 pounds. Eh, the payload's gonna be about 9,000 pounds. Oh, because of this is heavier yep. a little bit? Yep. Okay. Yep, bed's about 800 or so pounds. What? It, what is very special about this bed is it's built on a three-point pivot system. So one pivot in the rear, two in the front, and it allows the bed six degrees of articulation left and right. 
So the bed is able to flex independently from the frame. Liquid spring already mitigates the majority of that flex that occurs in a frame rail, going over obstacles and that sort of thing. But there is still movement within the frame. You have a camper in the bed of the truck, what can end up happening is it can end up stressing the camper and you can get cracks and things like that. Bowen created this bed to kill those issues because the bed itself is moving as you crawl over obstacles and things like that. And you can really see that just in the, di the distance difference from there to there. So you have about a two inch difference. As it sits right now. Correct, yeah. as it sits right now. And that is a eucalyptus stump. that's about 17 inches tall. There you go. So it's kind of showing, first of all, articulation of the suspension. Correct. But also additional articulation here. You know that famous now image of a Ram truck splitting in half? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it won't happen here. That definitely won't happen here. It won't happen in a 550. It won't happen in a 550. Because you have that higher capacity, right? Correct. Correct. People forget when you have a well-optioned truck, four-wheel drive, everything takes away from your payload, right? Right. All those things. Right. But these trucks, because they're heavier, different frames, Right. they have higher capacities. Higher capacities. The, the other part of the equation that, that often gets missed is where the loading center of gravity is in relation to the axle. So when you get into these really big sliding campers with a big overhang on the rear, the more weight you put rearward, the more stress it's going to put on that frame right where the rear and the front is seen together. Mm -hmm. Big campers have big overhangs, more, uh, more tension frame rails. It, 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 it's a lot of stress on the rails there. But this truck, you know, has a higher capacity, so. Uh, correct. There you have it. Yep. Because you're not tempering with that, right? You right. said it starts with the wheel, the tire, the suspension, all the components. The philosophy of our builds to create and build around what already exists and improve it without modifying the essential components, what make the truck what it is. So when we go through and design our build, we want to make sure it's FMBSS compliant and we follow Ford's bodybuilder guidelines and everything they say we can and can't do, that's kind of what you know we really focus on in our builds. Yeah, and it's still Kentucky 42 right there. And, and maybe even something taller. I mean, there is space. There is space. Yeah. There is space. So uh, I know some people run like bigger tires. Sure. 46s, others. Yep. Why 42? Is there a reason here? You said everything is revolving around the tire, sure, so to speak. Sure, sure. So everything is, is revolving around this tire. You can go to a 43 inch tire. This is an 8,250 pound rated wheel. So if we were to move from say a, this Goodyear 335 to a Goodyear 365, we would have to increase the height of the truck, which we're not there yet. Um, but if we were to do that, that's a, a, a tire that's rated for 8,000 pounds as opposed to 6,400 pounds. Um, but not a ton of things, or not a ton of rigs out there need that much payload. Um, but we may potentially get there early 24, we'll see. Well, but if you're worried, you shouldn't be worried about ground clearance. Definitely not worried about ground clearance. Because you got adjustable suspension height, and you know, you and I took uh, one of these trucks off-road, yeah. and I never hit anything, or well, I was never worried about hitting anything. Right. So in, in standard ride height, you have over 20 inches of center ground clearance. Um, high ride height, depending on the configuration, you have anywhere between like 23 and 26 inches of, of ground clearance center of vehicle. Yeah. And of course, I mean, some components are hanging a little bit lower, but any truck will have a trailing arm or something, sure. you know, that you need to be mindful or differential, right? Sure, of course, so, of course. It's very, um, so now as we wrap up, I got to ask you about, you know, some of these prices for these builds. Sure, sure. So Ram is 215 as is, as a black edition. Um, we only have a couple of those remaining for 23. Um, the Ford is 184.9, 185,000. Yeah. Um, and we have a few of those left for 23 as well. Um, this truck is, is a really special build don't have pricing on this yet. Oh, because um, of the bed and everything else, Yeah, right? because of the bed. This is a, a, the very first bed. It's probably going to end up being somewhere like between 210 and 225. Just because of the, uh, you know, everything that's involved here. Correct, correct. Well, very cool. And plus, you know, the brand new Super Duty is coming, right? Brand new Super Duty is coming. 2023 plus. Yep. 
Do you have some plans for that as well? We have big plans for that. Big okay. plans. We're really excited. Our, our first uh, 23550 uh, is being built actually this week. So we'll have that truck and we'll get to begin all the fun stuff on the, on the new body style truck. All right, Jeremy. Well, thanks a lot, dude. Thank you, sir. Appreciate all it. All right. Good to see you again. Right, good to see you. And guys, if you're in um, near Scottsdale, Arizona, stop by the auction. You're in one of the booths. This is kind of a, one of the main tents here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, um, main action, you know, all the cars and trucks are being sold in that direction. Correct. So we're the, the third booth in from the, from the Highline auction cars. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We'll see you next time.